Good morning, YouTube. It's Thunder Dan back at it again with another episode of 302 Fishing. As you can see, I'm riding solo today. Been trying to get a hold of the Oakster, but I have not heard from him in multiple days. So he's probably busy with school, uh, maybe his child, or maybe uh, the whole family all together. I I'm pretty sure he did tell me what he was doing this weekend. I'm just too old to remember what he told me because <laughs> my memory sucks anymore. But I'm out on a body of water where there is known giants here. That's the goal. You got one species in mind that we're going to go ahead and try to attack today, and that is the common carp. Uh, there are some doozies in here. There are 20 pounders in this pond, and in this particular area that I'm in right now is where these giants normally swim around and do their thing. I've already been noticing over my back right now that I've been seeing some breaches uh, up at the top of the water, and it's kind of leading me to believe uh, that these guys are active. We are going to use a variation of uh, the bait that we normally use we're actually excluding a couple things uh, from the normal bait that we use wrapped around it and I'll go ahead and show it to you in a couple seconds but uh, we're gonna wrap that line up right now and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that bait tossed out and hopefully if we're lucky we catch one of those golden giants out of this body of water right here all right so I'm at the car right now and I've grabbed what I'm gonna use to go ahead and try to catch these carp as you all noticed uh, when we do our episodes we always use cream corn dough ball and uh, cherry kool-aid so today we're only going to use one of those items to go ahead and try to attract just that certain fish uh, which is the carp as I told you earlier and we are going to be using whole kernel sweet corn I've got about three cans of this one of which is gonna be my bait can and the other two are gonna be the attractant to get them in which is gonna be the chum that I'm gonna toss out into the water again three dollars worth of uh, money that's spent on either one of these products altogether that's a cheap time to go out and fish if you're looking to sit down and chill out and just you know hoping for that big bite this is the kind of fishing for you uh, most of the time oaks and i are out there man we're just gung-ho and we're moving 80 miles an hour and trying to catch these bass left and right but sometimes again as he's told you you got to slow it down so you noticed on his last episode he told you that he slowed it down used a tiny little bait and he had a good old time so I'm gonna do that today on my effort to see if I can catch, a, again, a totally different species. We do still look for this species anyway. We don't fish it as often, but we love fishing for the carp because they are absolutely insane once they feel that they're hooked on and they just rip line right off of your rod, man, and they go crazy. It's like a torpedo, man. That's how they're shaped. So give me a couple seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and open one of these cans and open another and then start chumming out and uh, see if we can bring some of these fish in and uh, get that on the end of the line and uh, hopefully excite you guys and to continue watching this episode. But it is gonna be lulls in between here. So I'm gonna give it maybe, I'd say a half an hour uh, before we try to catch anything because these fish gotta figure out, hey, there's stuff out here that I can eat. We might have to fight some trash fish. I'm sure we're gonna be dealing with the bluegills and I'm sure we're gonna be dealing with uh, the catfish. They're gonna to try to nibble on this stuff as well too. But we'll fight through all that and try to get that target that we're looking for. All right, so we got all our stuff right here. Uh, my normal stuff that I come with, it's very simple uh, to go ahead and try to catch these carp. First and foremost, the most important part is having a good strong net to capture these uh, fish in once you pull them towards the shore. Because again, we have a ledge that's sitting right here and it makes it kind of hard to bring those big fish over uh, on your line onto shore. So that's why we have the net right there. I've got what I think is an old Shakespeare because of the colorations in the rod. Uh, it's a catfish uh, style rod, real thick and heavy. I also have a Shimano R4000 reel that's sitting on there with about maybe 10 pounds worth of line. Test that is. And simple size two Gamagatsus. And I have a swivel right here. The swivel will separate the weight from the hook. I have about a two foot trailer like this that'll have the hook on it. So that way it's able to you know flow freely through the egg sinker that I'm gonna use right now, which is this one right here. It's about an ounce, but we'll fit the, this, this slip, uh, excuse me, the swivel will be on this side, and then the hook and everything else will be on that side, so the swivel can move back and forth, and then that fish won't feel that weight and take that bait up in their mouth much easier. So let me get everything all tied up, and let's see if we can try to get something going here. Okay, so what I did is I took my rod, I cast out just a little bit, and I drew my uh, hook back into the area where I think the chum is at. So we're going to go ahead and set this down. I'm going to go ahead and get my rod holder out of the car. Hopefully nothing pulls on it, but I've got it behind this branch to give me a chance to uh, save that uh, rod from going into the water. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, pop the trunk of my vehicle. 
And the reason why we got the uh, rod holder is I want to pick the uh, line up off of the ground and I want to be able to see how that line is moving as those fish are hitting it because sometimes they're so subtle and their hits and everything you want to be able to notice and react to how that fish is uh, going to go ahead and uh, strike on that bait because when it's laying in the water it sinks and you can't really see it so we'll just put that right here hopefully got soft enough ground there we go again just put your rod holder right there and just place the tip right there and all you gotta do is just watch the line I got a little bit of a bow on the line and that way I can see when it's starting to straighten out that something is on the end of that uh, line there and hopefully it's a beast all right got my uh, got my frable already we'll put that right to our side that way it's there and just for the heck of it while we're sitting here waiting to see if anything's hitting here I grab my bass, uh, or excuse me, my bait casting reel. I'm going to throw a couple casts over here because there are some nice looking bass inside of this pond. I've caught maybe a four pounder out of here. Oaks caught a seven pounder out of here. Again, right off bank fishing right here next to these uh, areas that we fish at. We used to fish right over here. There's a, a restaurant over here and then just too many people are coming by and the restaurant owner just put a nix on that. But uh, that's because everybody was throwing their bread out out there for the fish to eat and uh it was just an easy target <laughs> and we took advantage of it i mean the owner let us but uh people caught wind of what we were doing and then of course they got to abuse it and then everybody pays for it we got a rage tail on that's what i threw on there if you want to know what the heck bait i'm using here soft plastic i'll throw over here and i'll throw some over here by this tree right here but we got another breach over here right at the tip of that tree yeah, look right here, guys. See, I literally watched the carp. It was about that big jump out of the water right by the tree there. Looks like we got a hit here, guys. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. The line snapped. I heard, I'm sure you heard the snap of death. Uh, I thought that was the snap of death, but it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know what the heck that was. Well, let's get it back out there again. I'm happy of that. Maybe I just pulled it too fast out of its mouth, I guess. I don't know. We're going to have to gently pull on this thing. All right, here we go, guys. we got to tug on the line over here. Here we go. Let's see what happens this time. Here we go, here we go. There we go. What do we got? Oh, nothing. I got my corn. <laughs> all right, let's get a couple more kernels on. All right, we're all loaded back up. And nice gentle toss over the, uh, where we were at. And just bring it into uh, shore just a little bit, lift up. That way it's not dragging and burring up underneath all those leaves. And again, I'm just gonna grab a couple small, small handfuls and throw it to either side of the bait here. And I'm gonna let a little bit of the slack stay out here. I'm gonna reel up just a little bit to give that chance of that fish picking the bait up and running with it. That's a little too much. Let me uh, let that bail back out again. And that should be good right there. That's perfect, just the way it is. If you can see that line bowing right there, that's kind of what you wanna see uh, while you're waiting for the fish to come by. Now right, here we go, as soon as I cast it in, Fish is going right at it already. I got one. What do we got? We got a caddy. Yep, little caddy. <laughs> All right, I kind of figured that's what we were dealing with right now. All right, we got to try to get the circle hook out of them. There we go. There we go, little caddy. But again, I'm sure he's getting ready to poop too. But I'm sure we're going to get a carp somewhere. She's going. 
and so begins the trash fish. <laughs> All right, we're not skunked, <laughs> but we're still looking for that target fish the carp. All right, so what I think I'm gonna do, my attack is gonna be going out further deep to get away from those tiny catfish. And that's my, where my hope is, because I'm watching air bubbles way out where uh, these geese are at. And that's why I think they're just sitting in just a little deeper, try to keep cool rather than be in a shallow, sunny area. But we're gonna throw a couple more kernels on here. And we're just gonna, again, work through the garbage fish. So I'm watching out here, like, look along my rod and right along the tip of my rod, that's where I'm seeing the bubbles at uh, for the uh, carp that are sitting out there. We'll just cast out there and see if they're hanging just a little bit deeper. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get corn out that far. But we're still going to throw a few handful out, again, just to still attract these fish. All right, so I'm going to do something I've never done before here over in this area here. I've got my duck boots on because I just happened to look down here and see that it's kind of shallow here. So I'm gonna very cautiously <laughs> put my foot here and see if I can put myself down here so I can get a better cast over to where these, this tree is at. And I don't have to worry about getting hooked up into the uh, trees behind me here, but I wanna try to get a, you know, an extra step closer to casting over by that tree right there where I think some bass are at. All right, we hooked up onto our bass. Guys, here we go. Nice. Right off of that tree. <laughs> About two pounder. All right, off the rage tail. <laughs> Boom. All right, two species. Still haven't gotten a target. But nice, pretty bass. Got some cool looking colors right on its tail. I don't know if you can notice that or not. That's pretty neat. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this fish revived. I'm sure it's all ready to go. Because it was jumping out of the water pretty well. And she's gone. I knew it was a matter of time before I hit one off of that tree. I was just casting all along and I'm trying to worry about this tree right above me right here. But uh, this little extra step that I got right here into the water is helping me out. So we're gonna try to throw it over here again, try to catch another fish. Again, still watching our line here for the carp, hopefully if it comes on. But it was weird about that when I felt the line was really, really slack. And then as I jigged up again, I could see the line moving to the left. So I wanted to give it a couple seconds time uh, to get that bait into him. And then that's why I whacked it in his face and brought it in. Be nice to catch a big one off of here. You know there's got to be plenty of bass sitting up under that tree. Again, as a fresh fall, uh, when we did our uh, episode, or I did my episode with the uh, catfish, that fell down during the winter. And it's provided nice shelter for multiple uh, species of fish. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, grab our rod over here. And I'm getting a boot full of water because the boat just came by and it's causing all kinds of waves and bringing it over my boot line. And it's probably going to happen again. Because if you notice out here, we got a bass boat out there traveling. All right, so I'm going to bring this retrieve in right here. And I'm going to go ahead and reel my line up and see if we still have bait on there. Again, I haven't seen any taps at all. That doesn't mean that something's been hitting on uh, that line right here. Thought I was getting a hit right here as we're speaking. But uh, again, like I said, it's a cheap bait, man, so you can go right through the stuff very easily. I got three cans. I mean, we're not going to go through it anytime soon. So I'm not going to be belly aching about it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and step up here, 
You can see the wave coming right at me from that bass boat that just came through. I just don't want my uh, boots to be filled up. That's one thing is about these people on this water, man. They just fly through here when they know there's a known speed limit in here. All right, that wave will just give me time to go ahead and reel on this line to see if there's any bait on here. Speak of the devil, we got another one flying right through here, man. The worst are the ones that want to do all the uh, uh, boogie boarding and all that nonsense, which we're not even supposed to be doing here. But we got some time before that wave hits over here. There we go, a bass right here, guys. Right off the bat. Fish on, we got another one on. Oh, this is a decent one. This is a good decent one, guys. Here we go. One or two pounds, maybe. I haven't seen it yet. It's a good one. Oh, yeah, that's a three-pounder. Easy, guys. Easy. Look at that. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Look at that bass, guys. Holy crap. I told you that tree yields some good fish. Boom. How about... Oh, he's shaking my hand off. But uh, let's go ahead and get a quick weight on this one. I got a feeling it's just about three pounds, but it's worth a shot on the scale here. Nice, solid belly on this. And uh, we already, I think we were zeroed out here. Yep, we're zeroed out. And uh, let's go ahead and see how much this one weighs. And let's see if I turn around here so you guys can see it. And... 2.95 pounds, almost a three pounder. What a beaut of a fish. Good deal. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and aerate Mr. Bass here. And uh, what a beautiful fish. I mean, all th the almost three pounds that it is. And see her go. And she's gone. Well, that was a surprise. I didn't realize I was going to catch one that big off of that tree. I mean, it's not truly a surprise. I mean, it's going to be fish near structure. But uh, there are some decent ones here. I caught one about a year and a half ago, right up underneath these trees right here. And uh, that one was a five-pounder, man. I caught that one on a buzz bait. But uh, let's go ahead and try to get another one over there. See if we can try to catch another bass while we're waiting for this uh, carp action to pick up. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and reel this back up here. And we're going to try to toss over by, by this tree here. But we have to see if we have any uh, bait on there first. Yep, we'll toss those couple out there. We'll go ahead and get the debris off it first. All right, again, we're going to cast over here, try to, to get as close to that tree as we can. And again, I don't want to get my hook all messed up here and, and jacked up into these trees. But here we go. There we go. Kind of right where I want to be. Keep that tip up high and just put it where I think I need to put it at, as usual. Let's make sure we got enough slack. And here we'll let a, about just a half a foot go. And that should be good enough right there. Just enough for me to watch that line move. We got something on, guys. I don't know what we got good on going on here, but we'll tighten up that drag a little bit. What do we got? It's decent size, whatever it is. It's a decent size, whatever it is. It could be a carp, I don't know. It hasn't surfaced yet. Yeah, I think it's a carp, guys. I think we got one on. It's fighting. Yeah, it's definitely a carp, guys. It's definitely a carp. All right, what size do we have here? That's the key. There we go, I gotta let some of this out. Yeah, it's definitely a carp. Where's she at? Yeah, she's over there, right in this area, guys. I can see it.
it's gonna be a bit for this oh lord it's pulling pretty good guys it's pulling pretty good all right guys you just see me the battery died and i'm sitting here fighting this big old carp right here it's right there see him <laughs> nice i'm gonna say it's a good possibly eight ten pounder I told you there's some nice ones right here. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, get my camera near. I'm gonna turn this one on. There you go, right there, guys. See him? All right, I'm gonna try to get in here. And we're gonna try to easily bring this fish over here. And look at this carp. Look at the size of this carp. And then reel it in a little bit more. Hopefully it doesn't jerk the line apart. Perfect hook set, and uh, she is very calm and docile right now, so we're gonna take uh, very good care of bringing this fish out of the water right now. Here we go, guys. Nice, nice carp. I mean, it's gotta be, it's fat as anything. Good 10 pounds easy. Let me drop it in the net so it doesn't go anywhere. And we're gonna get this line out here. So three species of fish, and we hit our target species and we get a good one. A very nice one. All right, so it took about an hour and a half. We finally got the target fish that we wanted. Very beautiful hook set right in the mouth with the circle hook, so it'll be easy to take out. And look at this belly on this carp. Wow, wow, wow. We're gonna get a quick weight. I'm gonna gather that it's probably gonna be weighing about 10 pounds just based on that belly alone right there so give me a couple seconds and let's go ahead and get this fish weighed up all right first things first we'll take that circle hook out of its mouth there we go circle hooks out that's all it was guys very very small hook but you covered it all the way up with those uh kernels so that the uh, carp doesn't feel it and rather than pick the fish up, I'm going to weigh the fish inside of the, uh, the uh, net itself. We are all zeroed out. And I'm just going to grab two ends of this right here and then right here. And all I'm going to do is just lift it up. I'm going to say that the scale weighs probably not even a, a pound because it's aluminum. But we're going to raise this up. And again, it just causes no harm to the fish whatsoever. Look at the size of that fish. I'm going to let it go. And you guys can see it right there. So we're going to subtract maybe a pound from there. And you're looking at well over almost 11 and a half pounds of carp right there that I just caught off a of whole corn. Guys, one thing about carp, you gotta try to be as gentle as you can with them. Because again, these fish uh, are very sensitive uh, to trauma and everything else. And uh, you really don't wanna hurt these fish in any way, shape, or form. I'm gonna grab the scale, or grab the net, and we're gonna put her in the water, just to keep her uh, moist. All right, so let's give you guys a nice looking look at the uh, carp again. And it's own natural environment there. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty carp. Look at the length of that thing. <laughs> but we're gonna let it go back and forth. We're gonna aerate it in the net. Fish doesn't look too super excited. But uh, that was a that was a pain in the butt, guys, trying to uh, get that fish in. But uh, it looks like she's ready to go. I can see her starting to swim inside of the net and everything else. So give me a couple seconds to go ahead and. Uh, Get that carp out of there. All right, we got her by the gills. Let's get this net out of the way. Point our uh, scale down. And uh, nice, nice carp. But uh, look at this, guys. She's breathing okay. She's got her tail going right here. I can feel it already moving, seeing it. And we're gonna go ahead and let it go. And she's gone. All right, so there you have it. 
Uh, <laughs> I was hanging my head a little bit, man, not thinking that this episode was gonna pan out. Uh, you saw that you know, nice little catfish that I pulled in there on the corn, and uh, there was a little bit of a lull. I was just hitting, getting little dinks here and there, and you saw those two nice little bass I caught off of the tree right there using a rage tail while I was trying to pass some time. It took literally about almost two hours, and I was fanning around with the uh, corn and everything, uh, and I was looking at all the telltale signs where I think carp would be. I saw the carp jumping by the tree that was behind me, and it was a small one. I was like, ah, I'm not gonna go right there yet. So I was going from my left over to my right, and I was seeing all the bubbles rise up out of the water where I know carp were moseying all around. They were picking up those little kernels that I was throwing out there as chum. But I said, I'll bet you $5 if I cast in front of this tree, there's gonna be something sitting right there. And lo and behold, not even 20 minutes after I cast it right at the end of that tree where I caught those bass at, that thing blasted that corn and it was off to the races, man. I mean, it was pulling that rod big time. I didn't have my drag set, so I had to quickly fix it so I didn't uh, go ahead and snap the line, but it was dragging out all that line out of You guys hear her squealing right off the reel. But um, in the interim, when I didn't have that set, I'm trying to bring the fish in, my battery decides to die on my GoPro. So you can imagine me trying to reel a 12 pound carp in while changing a battery. That's, it wasn't an easy feat, but I made it happen. And I was able to pull that beautiful golden fish right out of there for you guys all to see. And again, all off a simple $1 bait. The whole, what is this again? Whole kernel sweet corn. I was throwing the chum out there and I had five or six kernels on the end of these circle hooks that I was using right here by Gamagatsu. And that's all she took, man. A beautiful hook set and uh, we got her in and uh, I was happy. We got that target fish as we said we were gonna come and get when we started off this episode. So hopefully uh, you guys would have liked all the multi-species I caught, but primarily that target fish. As always guys, like, subscribe, push that notification bell and fish on.